Uh, welcome to the Abbey Museum's 2012 Archaeological Field School at Tranquility Farm. Uh, Tranquility Farm is a large shell midden in um, coastal Hancock County, Maine, that the Abbey Museum first started excavating in the 1930s and continued to, to research. Over the years, we returned to the site in the late 1990s for several years of excavation. And uh, in 2010, we resumed again, and this is our third year in the stint of doing research at the Tranquility Farm. And we have a group of about 14 um, in folks interested in archaeology that are here for the week to uh, further our research and further their learning and have a, have a positive experience learning about the past of Native people in Maine. There were lots of broken pieces of potsherd in this hole and several scrapers and lots of pieces of bone and mixed fragments. We found little pockets of charcoal uh, here. You can see this ring here and pockets of charcoal, some pottery back there. Um, very, very black, greasy soil in here. You can see it. It's still coming up, these, these, these lenses of, of greasy soil that clearly show that there was uh, there was hearth activity or food activity. Um, fun. I, I'm, in, I'm enjoying this, you know. And every time, uh, it's amazing what comes up and, and what they can tell. I wanted to get experience and more experience in uh, the field, uh, but I actually fell in love with it last year when I did it and became an intern at the Abbey this year. We've also been finding some flakes. Uh, a little while ago, we did. I found a bear tooth in here. Pretty decent sized bear. Um, we've had several students that were already in an anthropology program in college that came to get a try to have a chance to try archaeology in the field. It's a nice opportunity because it's just one week. Sometimes, uh, especially. Um, College students that need to have a summer job can't do a longer field school like some of the colleges and universities run, so our one week can be helpful for that. We had um, a high school student who came as our scholarship student probably about six years ago or so to a field, our, our, the, our annual field school that was up in northern Maine that year. Um, she came to the field school, she did an internship at the Abbey Museum, and she has since gotten her undergrad and her master's in archaeology so, and, is, is, and, worked, and worked in the field. So. Well, so far we found a lot of flakes. We found a bone. We found um, some worked stones. One of which was brought fr was was from a rock that was brought about 300 miles and then worked here. I'd say that was the most exciting thing so far. What else yeah. did we find? And the uh, bone, oh, not bone, uh, rock worked knife that was broken. Oh, that the one that you just pulled out? Yeah. That came from this. Yeah. What's interesting about this square? Well, it's not a standard down here. This bottom part is not standard, just crushed clamshell shell shell heat material. It's part of a complex of activities. When I'm northwest. You're northeast. I'm northeast, and this is northeast right here on Mars. Yeah. Okay. And you're northwest. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. What's unique about this square? It's got the hole for the post, the rocks in it, right? There's now. a lot of wishful thinking in this <laughs> hole, actually. <laughs> well, this next elevation, we ought to Linda, maybe we'll uncover something more. I, I decided in fourth grade that I wanted to be an archaeologist, and of course, at that age, everybody says, "Oh, that's a lovely idea," and you'll change your mind 20 times. Um, but I'm an archaeologist, and I, I, I <laughs> stuck with that. I was able to get a summer job doing archaeology, starting in um, just before college and paid my way through college and grad school by doing archaeology in the summer and focused on anthropology and archaeology through undergrad and grad school. Well, I really like learning about the mapping process and how systematic, I guess, it all is. I really like math and it's very mathematical, all the grids and the paperwork I actually enjoy, strangely enough. A lot of fishbone and um, a little bit of pottery, um, mainly my partner in crimes from finding the most pottery she found really pretty 
large tin tape pieces, but I've been mainly finding bone. Um, so they're thinking that our pit is like a food processing area. And I feel very lucky to be working, have a degree in anthropology and working in my field and being in Maine. No, I think that this, you, you don't um, have to be going into archaeology to really enjoy this and learn from it. And um, I've been doing archaeology for three summers now, and the summer I'll always go and um, do some archaeology. Just Oh, per periwinkle. Haha, <laughs> no. Don't know. The only way we even get close to the answer would be to look at the pottery. We got a really cool piece of pottery this morning. That's, yes. The rim. Yes. That was very, very nice. One of the neat, one of the neat stories I like of our participants is Jean Rohr, who's a museum volunteer. And um, Jean is, yeah, she's down in the lower far lower unit there. Um, she wanted to be an archaeologist when she was young, and she was basically told by society that that wasn't something young women did. So she became a nurse, which is something that young women did do. Uh, and her dream of doing archaeology was deferred because of society's expectations. Um, and so this has been her chance once she's reached a point in her life where she says, to heck with society's expectations, I want to do archaeology. Um, so she was able to come in her, in her retirement to start doing archaeology. She has been to the field school a couple of years. She's a great laboratory volunteer. She washes and sorts and catalogs the collections in the lab. So that's um, a lot of what we hear from the from the older participants is that they've always been fascinated with archaeology. Uh, they wanted to do it when they were young and they just they life practicalities got in the way and this is their chance to get out and give it a try. Huh. Yeah. I signed up for it because as a kid I wanted to be an archaeologist and I thought this was a fun way to get as close as possible and I'm enjoying it because I, I like history and it intrigues me that we're digging up stuff like how these people live. That's fascinating. I wish there was a way. Is anybody else coming? Yeah, I signed up for the field school because I want to go into archaeology and I've done some maritime archaeology digs but never anything that is like Native American, and that's something that I'd like to do eventually, so I thought it'd be good to understand how the process of this was, and also um, it was recommended by who I work for, so. They seem to fit within a pattern of uh, occupation that we, we might expect from a ceramic period for the last you know, 2,500 years, 2,800 years. Finding some really neat pottery and work tools. Nothing too fancy, but down here we think we've got a food processing area down there. And because um, it's a Sorry. lot of fish, animal, fish, mammal, and bird bones. And um, sharpening flakes, yeah, not a yeah. lot of flakes, but flakes that they seem like they were sharpening their kitchen tools maybe, right, right. and pottery. But that seems more food processing, and I know some of the ones over there have had a lot of flakes where they might be making tools. Yeah. And uh, so it, it seems pretty, pretty interesting that way that, that I think they'll be able to do some activity areas. So certainly um, at any archaeological site in Maine, there's the standard prehistoric trash, pre, you know, pre-contact garbage that we find. We find lots of chips of stone, mostly probably made of a local, relatively locally available volcanic rock, similar to basalt, but finer grain. We're finding a lot of that. We find broken pieces of pottery, pieces like, pieces like this of broken pieces of pottery. And this is a, a pretty nice cluster of, of broken pottery with some decoration on it. Oh, my dirty hand. This is, this is um, dentate stamp pottery. Yep, and we found um, dentate stamped on, and we think we found a little bit of cord wrap stick as well um, in another part of the site. Animal bones, we found, I don't have them all here, but we found bear and moose and beaver. Um, we also find fish bone, and this is a, just a little handful of mostly fish Maybe bone, but they're about the right size for flounder or tomcod. Because we're finding unfinished work pieces, we know that they were making stone tools on the site. Wow. Again, using this... Um, we think it's probably a locally available. It's actually pretty nice. It's pretty fine grained, really nice rock, although it has some challenges, I think, for the flint napper. But we're finding some unfinished broken pieces, which they were making the tools. And then fragments of 
more finished stone tool. So there's a couple of um, probably knife-like tool points that may have broken just before they got finished or may have broken when they were being used. Archaeologists always talk about finding things in context and how finding when we find things in the ground next to each other or close to each other that's really important and really helpful. This piece of pottery and this base of this little spear or arrow point were found very close to each other in the units down closest to the water and the um, point is the style point style is referred to as Jack's Reef and the dentate um, stamp pottery um, there's a neat dentate stamp pattern just along the top and then some spaced along there are they are um, very consistent with each other in terms of date a date for the occupation of the site so that was neat to find those in, in association with each other when we look at the type of stone that the artifacts are made out of it tells us about trade networks and travel across the landscape these are two scra little scrapers scraping tools probably used to do things like make bone points maybe make arrow shafts for or spear shafts scrape wood that sort of thing um, this one is made out brick, of a, kind of a brick red and greenish gray stone that comes from Munsungan Lake, Norway Bluff, Brown Mountain up north of Baxter State Park and is one of the finest flint napping materials locally available in Maine. And then this little guy here is made out of a pinkish um, semi-translucent rock called Cal Chalcedony that comes from um, the upper, upper Bay of Fundy area in Nova Scotia. So we know that, that people within this broader region were interacting and either traveling or trading um, stone material to make tools from. So that's gives us a broader picture of, of how the people living on the site were interacting with their region and their environment. This is just, just as an example of the kinds of, of raw materials, the full range of raw materials. This is a big chunk of moose leg bone that was being the pro probably in the process of being split down to make into, into bone tools. Um, it's been uh, worked with stone to start splitting it apart and it's just a left, uh, probably the, they used the other pieces to make stone tools and this was a leftover piece but the kind of giving you the picture of the folks that would they'd go out and they'd hunt their moose and they would use probably every aspect of that moose but not only did they eat the meat and probably use the hide of the moose but they used the bones to make their tools uh, so the whole process is represented which I think is, is pretty interesting <laughs> it's certainly it's certainly a, it's certainly a lot of um, organization making sure that everything's all organized and, and and all the equipment and all the details and everything are put together but it's a nice treat for me to get out of my lab. I mean, my, my workspace at the museum is a wonderful workspace, but it's in a basement and it's very clean and lovely, but it's indoors. And I spent so much of my life outdoors doing archaeology that it's a treat um, and for my one week of the summer to be able to get out and come to an absolutely beautiful, it's not like digging, you know, testing on the, a pipeline and the power lines and Juniper, it's a beautiful location. So the, uh, all the organizational work and prep work certainly pays off with a really nice week out here in the field.